Welcome everybody and if you're new to this channel my name's Paul Miguel I'm a professional wildlife photographer and in this video I'm going to give you some tips for photography if you're visiting a nature reserve. Now the first thing I would do is just a little bit of research before I get here. Uh, today I'm here at Staveley Nature Reserve which is a Yorkshire Wildlife Trust Reserve near Borough Bridge in North Yorkshire. Now you can go onto the website, get lots of information and just get an idea of what the reserve's like, kind of the lay of the land and also how big it is because you want to know how far you're actually going to be walking. That's going to depend on fitness levels and also what gear you're carrying which we'll come to later in the video. Also make sure you look at a map whether it's online or it's an old um, old school physical map you can hold in your hand. From your research as well you can find out what kind of wildlife you're likely to see here whether that's birds, mammals or insects or perhaps you're interested in plants and flowers as well and if you can if you can find the time just try and learn at least a little bit about maybe one or two species that you're likely to see. Now, does it matter what time of day you visit the nature reserve? Well, I would always say if you can, I would try to visit either early or late in the day. Some species will be more skittish and you're probably less likely to see them when there's more people around. So if you can make the most of early morning, for example, first thing, if you can get there before anybody else, you're probably likely to have more opportunities. Once it gets later, a lot more people arriving, then you'll probably find some of the wildlife will kind of back off. Also consider going out on wet days. Now I know it might not seem like too much fun in those conditions, uh, but you'll probably find there's less people around on those days. And if you're at a reserve that's got some hides, then there's nothing wrong with sitting in a nice, warm, comfy hide whilst it's raining. And that can actually be quite good for pictures as well. Now, if you want to increase your chances of spotting wildlife, there's a few things that you can do. And the first one is simply to move slowly. Now, it might sound really obvious, but not everybody does that. Uh, so just try not to be in a rush just take a leisurely pace nice and slow and you're more likely to spot wildlife that way now another thing you can do is to take a pair of binoculars with you and you might think why would you need that because if it's too far away to, to see you're not going to be able to photograph it and I actually got into that way of thinking for a while but it's not a good way to think uh, if you can spot something at a distance then you're more likely to know it's there in the first place and then you can move in closer also if you can and try to learn some bird sounds. Now this doesn't mean you have to become an expert overnight on everything, but if you can learn one or two sounds of birds, uh, bird calls, bird songs, of birds that are regularly on that nature reserve, then that can really, really help. Again, if there's a bird in a bush, in a tree, sometimes you might not be able to see it. You don't know it's there at all, but if you know the sound that that bird makes, then you will know it's there, and if you stay there quietly for a while, then you've got a chance of the bird showing itself and getting some pictures. Now, one of the great things about nature reserves is that wildlife can sometimes become quite accustomed to people. So just from the comings and goings of people regularly, you'll find that sometimes certain birds or animals might just become more tolerant. And that means you can get a little bit closer. If you see a bird or an animal that just seems you know, less skittish and seems more tolerant of people, then that might be a good opportunity to try and get a bit closer to get some pictures. Now you could also use a bit of food perhaps, maybe bring a bit of food with you, uh, some nuts or maybe sunflower hearts for example. That can really help you in terms of photography. What I would say is try and do that responsibly. So I would never put too much food out. If you start throwing tons of food, particularly in the same place, and then that could encourage rats, for example, which isn't going to be good. And also think about other people. So if there's other people there, maybe they got there before you, are you already affecting what they're doing? In terms of photography gear, you do want to have a fairly long lens. If you're walking around a nature reserve like this, it tends to be quite opportunistic, so you don't know how close you're going to get. Now, I would suggest a focal length of 400 millimeters or more. Uh, 300 millimeters can be okay, and for a lot of beginners, that's not a bad way to start off. Uh, but if you can do, I think 400 millimeters is a better minimum. And also consider extenders, that's a, a cheaper option. You can have a shorter lens, such as 200 or 300, and put an extender on that, but you, you will 
will lose some quality and slower autofocus as well. Then also I would consider looking at cropped sensor bodies. It kind of zooms in, so it kind of gives you more reach than you'd have with a full frame sensor. Also, it's really important to think about how you're gonna carry your gear. So this is gonna come down to a number of things, depending what you've got, depending how fit you are, how far you're gonna be walking. Again, goes back to doing a bit of research and checking the map and distances. Now, you probably don't wanna be carrying a huge lens around all the time. You probably don't wanna be carrying a tripod as well. Uh, you might be better hand-holding for your photography, but you wanna have something, to, I would say, to actually carry your camera and lens just to uh, reduce a bit of the burden at times. So personally, I actually love these straps. Uh, this is a black rapid strap, uh, which goes into the, the lens foot on the lens, and you have it down by your hip. You can carry it around by like, like that, and then you can just swing it up and you can start shooting. And think about camera support as well. You might just want to handhold all the time and that can be absolutely fine. Uh, one thing I'd say is try and make use of supports that you can that you see out and about. So on nature reserves and also parks, for example, try and make use where you can of things like walls, fences, um, fence posts, anything where you can support the camera where possible, that's gonna help you to get sharper pictures. Now in some situations you won't be able to do that, so you might wanna opt for a tripod or a monopod, or again, you might just be happier hand-holding. When it comes to camera settings, I think it's a good idea that you actually put some kind of settings into the camera before you get to the reserve. So perhaps you could do this the night before, or maybe when you just arrive, you're first about to head off onto your walk. Now, what I would do is actually have like a default setting because you don't really know what's gonna happen. Maybe set it up as if you were photographing birds in flight to take advantage of any quick moving situation. And if it is against the sky, then perhaps a little bit of overexposure can help. Now I did make a video all about setting up your camera for this style of walkabout photography, opportunistic photography. I'll put a little information card up on the screen and also a link in the description below to that video. And also think about light direction when you get onto the reserve, where is the sun coming from? That's something also you can research beforehand. There's apps you can use to tell you exactly where the sun's gonna be, the direction it's gonna be shining. So have a look at that as well. And also think about seasonal changes. Throughout the year, the sun is not gonna be in the same place all the time. It's gonna move around. It's gonna be very different in the winter to in the middle of summer. And also bear in mind your backgrounds, the surroundings, they're gonna change with the seasons. Sometimes hides can be good for photography, but a lot of the time they just tend to be too far away from the action. So the best thing to do is just assess the situation, have a look at the hide, have a look from the outside, then get in there, see what you think the opportunities are. It's a good idea when you first come in to decide really where you want to position yourself. So rather than just come in and sit down anywhere, have a look, see what's going on. Uh, decide if you think one place is better than another. Maybe there's some action, maybe the background or the light is better. Decide on the best position for you. Generally speaking, hides are not made for tripods. They're just not really set up for that. So there's a few ways that you can support your camera and your lens. And the first one is simply to rest it on a shelf. So if you've got a shelf like this, uh, just rest the lens. I tend to rest sort of towards the end of the lens like that. Uh, that can work really well. The other option is to use bean bags. So if the shelf is like the right situation and the window's big enough, then you can put a bean bag on there. You can put the camera and the lens on top of the bean bag, nice and stable. The other option, uh, again, it's just being a bit innovative sometimes when you need to be, and that is to use your camera bag. So you can put your camera bag on this shelf and then rest the camera on that. Again, if you want a bit of extra height, you can put the bean bag on top of the camera bag. So there's a lot of ways to, to support your camera in a hide. And as I mentioned earlier as well, the hide is perfect for bad weather. So it's not gonna matter how bad the weather is outside to you, nice and warm and dry inside the hide. But outside, if there is still wildlife fairly active, which a lot of subjects still will be, and you can get some really atmospheric shots, you can be creative and just make the most of that, what we call bad weather. And the hide is the perfect place as well if you've got a big heavy lens. So just one initial walk to the hide, however far that is, and then you can plonk yourself down nice and easy.
When you get to know the reserve a little better and places that you really want to get to, have a look for various entrances. So some reserves may only have one entrance, it might even be locked at certain times, there's nothing you can do about it. But other places you might find there's different ways in. So depending on where you want to get to, if you want to get there quicker, then see if you can find other entrances. It's going to get you where you want to be faster and save time. This style of photography does tend to be a little bit more opportunistic, but which is actually better, opportunistic photography or something more planned? I actually made a video all about this, sharing my thoughts and what I think are the advantages and disadvantages of each one. If you'd like to see that, then just click the link that's up on the screen. I'll also put the link in the description below this video. Thanks for watching and I'll see you out and about sometime soon.